Hey everybody, so we're going to be experimenting with cyanotypes on leather. Uh, if you don't know what cyanotype is, they're basically the reason blueprints are called blueprints. Um, they're an early form of photographic exposure, I guess. We're going to mix these two together, we're going to paint them on some leather, let it dry, and then we're going to put some stuff on it and expose it in the sun, and what we should get is a nice indigo colored leather with whatever we put on the leather uh, as leather shining through it, showing through it. So. So I have a measuring cup here. You just mix these one to one. Uh, this is the Jacquard kit. They make like tie dye and stuff. Um, we're just gonna mix 50 mil and 50 mil, if I can. There's 50 mil and 50 mil. And all we do is just paint it on, I guess. Mix it up a little bit. And then I'm going to try to work quick because this isn't really supposed to be exposed to light so much. Alright, so day two. I'm going to be very quick in showing you this is everything dried but it's now photosensitive, or UV sensitive. So what we're gonna do is we have two things going. I did some under a grow light indoors, and I'm gonna go outside now, and I'm, my idea is to just grab a bunch of sticks and stuff and make almost like a camo pattern. So we can use it more, you can use lace, traditionally people will use lace, they will use um, all sorts of like actual stuff, but I wanna see if we could get like a kind of a cool patchy camo with like actual sticks and leaves and stuff. So we're going to do that with this one first, and then we also have one ready to be rinsed off because this is kind of a multi-day video in filming this. That way we can rinse one off so that it will be dry by tomorrow, and then hopefully we have more time to bring this in because this is going to be outside, and we'll also rinse this one off so we can see what the difference is between using a UV grow light indoors or using this on outdoors. Keep in mind it is March, almost April, but... We're in New England, so the sun is not the strongest right now. Um, but basically, you leave it out in the sun with stuff on it. Anything that the light hits turns blue. Anything it doesn't turns not blue. I think with leather, it just automatically turns a little blue. That's the difference between this and paper. But we're just going to go for it. So we're going to go outside. Um, we do have a new camera coming, so the audio will get better soon. But the audio might be bad outside because it's a little breezy today, but we'll do our best. So over here, we took seagrass. Yeah. Seagrass, just laid it out on one of the pieces, and then I took our grow light and went made it very, very close. So what we can do now, is raise that up, and then just take all these off, and now we gotta go over and uh, rinse this off. To mix this, uh, to rinse this off and stop the chemical reaction, we need water, and that's pretty much it, but it says, both in what I found online and on the actual packaging itself, that adding some hydrogen peroxide helps too. I have no idea how much, but we have peroxide here, so I'm just gonna kinda squirt some in. And maybe that's, I don't know, 10 to one, 15 to one. So we'll see how it goes. So this is what it looks like before we put it in. You can see where the seagrass kind of created some little patterns. And now... It looks like bones. Yeah, so what this like is going to oxidize it, basically. Ooh, look at that. So as I rub, you can see where... Okay, so the blue chemical doesn't stay on in the places it was exposed. So it may look like it's super blue, but it's not actually. I should have used warmer water. This is cold. <laughs> now, to get perfect prints of, like, like say you want to do leaf pressings or something like that, the traditional way to do this since the, I think, 1800s, is to wedge things under glass. 
Um, I personally, with this first trial, I'm just going for like some cool texture. I didn't really want to do like a piece of lace under glass and then it just looks like a lace pattern. If we know this works, you guys, I'm sure you guys will experiment with it because it's like a $20 kit on Amazon. Um, but I just wanted some texture that we could work with. And this seems like it's going to give us a perfect texture. So yeah, now I'm just going to kind of let that soak for a few minutes. And then we'll pull it out and of course we'll be able to see kind of what it looks like, but we need to let it dry overnight. So we did some with some, oh, there it goes, with some dried flowers next. So let's see how that turns out in the bath. Flowers came out really pretty and it looks like outside there's just not enough UV light. The sun, it's in March, like I said, so under that grow light seems to be our best results as far as getting exposure is concerned. Um, so we have a couple other pieces I'm going to play around with, but this has to dry overnight so we can make something out of it tomorrow. I'm just going to go let this dry. I'm not going to wipe it or anything because the one thing I'm concerned about is how um, how stable this color is on this leather. So we'll, we'll do some test pieces tomorrow to see what takes it off, what seals it in, etc. But for now I'm just going to lay this flat on the surface and let it dry overnight. Alright, so day three and we have mixed results. Um, these are all the same leather, uh, just different exposures. This one is, so this is dry here but still wet here, so I don't know if the rest is going to be, it looks like as it dries it turns blue. This one's fully dry and looks awesome, so we're going to make a little piece out of this one. This is also fully dry, and this was the one we just put some flowers on, and it's definitely a cool look, like that would be the card holder, but it's very reserved, so I think we need to still practice with this, but we're going to make a little piece out of this because this is really beautiful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go use the clicker press, our big clicker press, and I'm going to use one of our cutting dies. So this is how we make our production pieces. This is a cutting die, clicker die, and we put all of the stitching holes in ours. So if you were to have just this shape, which you can take out the stitching, the clicker dies, or the stitching holes, if you just undo these screws, um, you could use a lighter press, but we have to use a pretty heavy press because all of the holes create more surface and you need more pressure. So I'm gonna go press this out and then we'll stamp a logo in it. And then I also wanna try out this uh, Giardini edge paint. I used it a couple times and I really like it. So I think we're gonna give that a go on this too, but it'll just be a quick project. Here we go. So this is where the real cool stuff happens, right? Because I remember this was just seagrass and with the cyanotype, we get all these cool patterns. So I think I am going to go with this one. Of course, I'll make them all later, but for the video, I'm going to just go with this one. And what we're going to do is we're going to put it together. But what we need to do first is we need to edge paint the top of this and actually in the inside of this. So we'll get those sanded down and then we'll give these two things a go and I'll show you why I'm really interested in this brand specifically for edge paint. So admittedly, I've only used uh, like Uniters and Weaver's edge paints. Uh, this stuff is a two part edge paint. So I've used it once already and I wanna see if it was a leather I used on or if the system's really that good. So the first thing is it's got a, um, a base and this is almost like a, it's a primer and it's like a filler. It's almost, if you've done body work, it's like literally like a primer filler. And so we're just going to take a little bit of this first and paint this on our edges. I'm just doing these two first because the other, I need to glue this together to do the other two. But it dries really thick and it dries really quick, not really thick, but it dries pretty quickly or thickly and it dries pretty fast. So we're going to put a little bit on that edge and then I'm going to do the inside of the thumb slider here. And you can of course apply this with whatever you can use with those rollers, you can use Whatever, I've always just done it with an awl, so that's what I'm gonna do it with. So once this is, uh, once the base coat's dry, I'm just gonna go in with, what is this, like 300 grit sandpaper, and just give it a light sand. I'm just trying to kind of remove any uh, bumps. You'll see it does a pretty good job of evening everything out. Alright, so this is one coat of paint. I haven't sanded it. Um, and this is like, obviously I would sand it usually, but I'm just gonna do my little trick and see if it works. So this is 91% uh, pure rubbing alcohol. 
and yep so that smooths it out without even needing to sand it and there we go so that's one coat of edge paint good enough for me uh, we're gonna throw a stamp in this buckle guy we actually got the new buckle guy press in because we wore out our weaver one which is actually really sad because i've had it for 10 years but um we're gonna go throw a stamp in this real quick and then we just have to glue it together paint the edges and sew it up a quick little sand and then I have to paint these edges before I stitch it because I'm going to wrap some stitching around the edges and I want it to be over the edge paint. So I'll be back in a sec. Now what we're going to do is a little bit of a bigger edge on this to try this stuff out. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm not going to go with heavy. I'm going to kind of like push it into the grain because I want like a bit of a quicker drying time on this and I sanded it down to about 400 so I don't have a ton to fill in. So you guys are kind of seeing this as I'm experimenting with it for the first time because I haven't done anything this, any edges this thick. This is a pretty thick piece of leather for this card holder. I usually make them out of like three ounce. This is about five. So I'm just really kind of working it into the grain and it's interesting because you can like see it filling the grain. It's, it's kind of cool. I think I'm going to end up really liking this whole edge paint system because it it takes a long time for me at least. I have to do like five, six coats to get a good clean finish, but between the little rubbing alcohol trick and if we could, if this stuff really works as well as it worked the first time at filling everything in so you only have to do two or three coats total, I could be talked into more edge painting because I do like the look. It's just like takes a lot of time and not practical yeah plus I do like a natural burnished edge too so yeah so you can see I'm, I'm not laying it on as thick this time I'm really working it into the grain here to see how that works whereas on the other two single edges and then if I get too much I'll just wipe it off and we'll just put that on there and let it dry. So I did the same thing again. I just sanded it down with 300 grit. And it seems to have worked the same as doing the heavier coats. Um, so I guess I'll just make a note and just do a thin coat of the filler, but really just kind of push it into the grain. And then I'm going to kind of do... I want to just try to do one coat on this and just see what happens if you only have time for one coat of color. So I'm going to do a heavy coat and then on one side, let it kind of sit and harden up a little bit, and then I'll do the other sides. What were you blowing on? That little hole right there. Oh. <laughs> it like filled with paint. Like a bubble. So that side's still drying, and I don't want to rest it down, but I want this side to dry flat too, so this is my ingenious way to try to <laughs> do this. Let's see if I can thread the, literally thread the needle. hey oh, There we go. Okay. Now hopefully that dries quick. So I'm going to take a heat gun on low and I'm just going to heat up the edges and this just kind of, I found this kind of sets the paint and since I've started doing this, uh, any edge paint that I've used hasn't peeled off at all. Um, not that I have a ton of edge painted things, but I have like watch bands and stuff that are with some painted edges that I've made to test and so far so good. So. Um, yeah, so this is almost dry, and you can see where there's a little bit of a line there, but I think after we heat this up and we hit it with some alcohol, rubbing alcohol, we can get that line to go away, and then our one coat edges are going to look pretty good. For most of our production work, like these pieces, we actually do more of like a Boy Scout style, um, and we use much thicker thread. So this is main thread. It's made in Maine. Um, 
This is their wax polycord. We've been using this for, gosh, over 10 years now. And we use it because it fills the holes of our dies really nicely. And it just looks a little chunkier. It's just an aesthetic. Um, you guys see us make pretty a lot more traditional stuff on the channel. Um, oh, I think I have the wrong needles here. But, um, but for our own aesthetic, we kind of like to go with that more campy look. So you're going to see something a little different today and that we're going to use the stuff we use on a day to day basis, making production work with our dies and our clickers and stuff um, to make this piece. So you can see this is one coat of the edge paint that I did no sanding after I let it dry. All I did was use 91% um, alcohol and I wiped it, so wiped it smooth. And there is a little bit of a ridge, but I think sanding in a second coat would definitely take care of that. So I'm really impressed with this stuff. Um, yeah, that's uh, nothing but good things to say about it. I'll probably switch to doing this a little bit more just because it's uh, it's a lot quicker. So it's just sewing now. That's basically it. But the reason I painted the edges first is because I am wrapping the thread around the outside on this piece. And so I wanted the edge paint to be under that thread. So we'll just get that to stack nicely and then just sew it up or it'll be done. All right, and here we go. So this came out really well. So again, this is called a cyanotype, and I got a little bit of glue that I have to kind of scrape off that one. But so the way that I sealed this was I just took some gum trag and I put it all over the face of these, and you can see how they're pretty shiny. Um, I put some gum trag on, and then I just buffed it out with a uh, linen cloth, and I'm really happy with it. So this is the one that just had the seagrass, made a nice little pattern. You can't really see; it's kind of abstract, but It'll work pretty nice and then the the edge paint test uh yeah that's one coat of the filler and one coat of the paint and we have a little bit of a valley i'd do a second coat but this doesn't seem like a the type of paint you're going to need six seven coats with to get a nice even shine which i really like so that's going to be it for this one guys it was kind of all over the place but it was a fun experiment um jacquard is the brand i got on amazon i think you can get it at michael's or Joanne Fabrics or wherever, um, but they make like indigo dyeing kits. I, I don't think it's um, natural indigo. I think it's synthetic, but they work okay. And this stuff actually does work on veg tan. So give it a go. I'd love to see your tries. Um, remember, you can put things under glass to get sharper corners too and sharper shapes. But beyond that, I think we're good for this one. So thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.